Hello, everybody, here for the impromptu 4th of July live painting. Um, I guess, I don't know if it's a party. It's sort of, we're going to paint. We're going to paint with some different colors than I normally use. And I hope this will encourage you guys to uh, maybe break up some colors that you don't typically use. If you guys could pop in the chat and let me know if you can hear me all right. Um, I'm doing this broadcast by myself. Like I said, it was an impromptu thing. So I just want to make sure you all can hear me. And we're going to begin by doing, um, I'm going to talk about the colors that I'm going to use. We're going to sketch out a um, picture of a couple flowers in some vases. And then we're going to going to paint them together and do some color mixing and at the end you can ask me some questions I will glance up at the chat from now and then but I don't know if I'll be able to catch nearly anything because um because I'm gonna be working on the um on the uh, demonstration here. So the colors I chose were, and I'm gonna tell you why I chose them because some people were like, why don't you just give away those colors if you don't like them? It's not necessarily that I don't like them. Some came in kits and some I just never really gave a fair chance to. So the first color that I have here, oh great, thank you guys for letting me know you could hear me fine. The first color I have here is Opera Rose. Now this is one of these two precious colors because this was, Pretty expensive. I bought this uh, many years ago. You can see it's the old packaging from Windsor and Newton. And this was almost $9 for this tiny little tube of paint. So it was too precious for me to use. And I'm sure you guys all have that kind of too precious thing happen sometimes. And then you have to save it for just the right thing. And then I realized it wasn't really that light fast of a color. So then I'm like, well, do I really want to use it? And I felt bad that I spent the money on a color that will fade. Actually, my friend Rich, who is the reason I'm doing this, um, he said that it the binder will fade. It will turn more of a quinacridone magenta um, with time. It doesn't actually bleach away. It's just the uh, the dye binder that, that something happens to it changes but doesn't fade. So that was good to know. The other color is vermilion and it's kind of an orangey red um, by Da Vinci Paint and this came as part of an intro kit. I really like this brand of paints and I love the size of the of the tubes. I mean it's almost like an acrylic sized um, type of tube but again it's a color I don't use very often so I'm going to use that I'm also going to use a rulian and um, this is a really hideous color on it when it's in the palette look at that it's kind of like this gray yellowy you know cucka color and but mixed out it's very vibrant and pretty and um, light fastness wise it's got a, a, a it's a two it's very good not ex excellent I guess. Um, and then we have um, Hooker's Green from Merrimy Blue. And this is an older version. This is a single pigment older version. So I think their newer version has a mix. Um, and I've got Peacock Blue. And my friend Jacqueline sent me this. Uh, she got this sample and she, I guess, didn't have use for it. So she sent me that. And I'm going to try that out. That is a mix. Um, and then I've got Van Dyke Brown, which is honestly a color I don't care for that much, but it does have some pretty granulation. I can almost see shades of blue and brown, even though, even though this is a, um, a single pigment color. So we're going to play with that. Um, I did link the reference photo that I, um, plan on using and we're going to sketch it. Oh, and this is the reason why I did this because my live stream on Friday that is the archive is available. We did the seascape and I used a couple colors, cobalt teal and Naples yellow, which are two colors I rarely ever use. I never use Naples. So that kind of was fun and I'm like, you know what? I got to give some other colors a chance too. So we're going to start by sketching on a couple vases and I'm not going to be too particular here. Um, I'm working on the smooth side of Canton 100, which is kind of like a hot press paper. So I just did a little ellipse for the top of my vase. I'm going to draw a line down the middle, do another ellipse down at the bottom. I'm going to connect my lines a little bit darker so you can see. I just didn't want to have, have too much of a, of a dark line to deal with in the future here. So you got one vase there. See, easy as pie, easier than pie. If you've ever cooked pie before, it's not very easy. This is though. And then we're going to do this little um, little squat vase over here. Again, I like to start with the ellipse, and then I'm going to do my line down. That's not perfect, but I think by the time we get we get the paint, we'll be we'll be in good shape. Do another ellipse down here, and it's a little crooked, but it'll be fine. I'm drawing it live, people. There's no there's no pattern. There's no fake in it. Um, and then I'm going to do a nice tall rose here. Get the stem in, kind of do a rectangle shape for the the uh, kind of majority of the shape. Then I'm gonna get this rose petal. It's kind of kind of opening up. This this is a fresh rose, kind of just just now opening. 
get some basic shapes. Get those little, uh, whatchamacallit, little flowers there. And um, Valerie Connell, I want to thank her for being our moderator today. Valerie, you can make other people moderators too if you see some trusted friends. Um, that way, we if any riffraff joins us, because this is a day where a lot of people have the day off and there could be riffraff among, <laughs> amongst us. So just keep it kind of nice and clean and family oriented, guys. I'm going to put a few um, leaves in here so we'll be able to play with our greens. See what we can make with greens. Some loose petals here. Uh, we're going to do a nice big old daisy here. Nice. We're going to start with a circle. And then we're going to put an, uh, another circle ellipse there in the middle. We're just going to put some little uh, lines to signify the uh, shorter, tinier petals in the middle. And then we'll do some longer petals. And when I do a daisy, I think of like a compass and how we have our north, south, east, and west kind of pointing out from the middle. And then I just go in and fill around. That keeps all my petals from leaning one way or the other. And I do, oh, somebody from Melbourne, Australia is here. I appreciate you guys all popping in today. I know it's it's impossible to get a time that works out for everyone. And this is a holiday, so I figured more people might be home. And, and my kids actually just went to go play um, at a friend's house. So I'm like, well, I've got, I've got some time. It's an impromptu came today. I just uh, scheduled an impromptu barbecue. So yeah, just, just one of those days. It's kind of nice when it all, when it all works out. So now I'm going to put a nice thick stem here, bring it down into the vase. There's, I feel like I want something else here, guys. What should I, what should I add? I've got a, these are both going to be yellow flowers, a yellow vase, a blue vase. I do have that pretty pink. I feel like I should add something else. Does anybody have any suggestions of what I could put in here? I think maybe I'll try to sneak another little vase in here. Let me straighten up the bottom of that. Maybe I can squeeze one in. So maybe just like a little tiny little bud vase back here. Actually, you know what? Maybe I could tuck it in front. I could tuck it in between, tuck it in front a little bit here because I have that impromptu. We love impromptu, don't we? There, so I've just put this little, this will be a pink vase or a purple vase. We'll do something different. We'll do this from our imagination. And what should I put in there? Maybe I'll put just like a little pink poppy because I'm fairly confident in my ability to draw a decent poppy <laughs> from, uh, from memory. And I am going to use my plastic eraser. Now, generally, I would draw on um, a piece of copy paper or tracing paper and transfer it, but um, but we're just we're just casual today. I'm gonna do a, a roughly ellipse, and then I'm gonna make make it like a bowl, like I've got a teacup here or a cereal bowl or something. And that's how I'm gonna draw this little poppy. And I think I will just put a little bud in there, a little poppy bud, and just separate the petals a little bit. Maybe make a curled over petal. Okay, that's not too bad. We're all right. We're doing fine. All right, now I'll go in and clean up any of my um, like ellipses or or um, little kind of scratchy marks I made just to kind of help myself out. So I just have the uh, important stuff here. I'm actually nervous. Can you guys, I, I don't know if you guys can tell, I feel very nervous doing this all by myself. I've gotten so used to Sarah being here. Um, during the live streams. Brush that off. Okay, so now we paint. I'm going to scoot this over here a little bit, scoot my palette over so you can see a little bit more. And I was going to use my Zen brush, and I thought I brought it up, but apparently I completely forgot. So uh, I'm just going to use a Mimic brush here. I can't believe I forgot to bring that up. And I thought, I, I think I brought my Micron pen up by mistake, which I didn't even need. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a wash on this blue vase here. So I'm going to wet it. Oh, a dragonfly. That's a good idea. And a butterfly. We could throw those in there. That would be pretty. I like that. I forget we're on a delay here. So when I ask, thank you, Denise. Um, when I ask somebody something, um, is that peacock blue color? Um, I have to wait for an answer. <laughs> And I just keep charging along. So I'm going to add some of this close to the edges and just kind of let it um, let it fade out. 
oh this is a pretty color now this is the only color I'm using today that is a mix and um, and that's kind of I've, I've kind of avoided the I've, I've been asked a lot to do a review on the mission gold colors but I've been a little hesitant to invest in them because so many of the colors are mixes um, the thing I did notice just when I was kind of playing around and and um, mixing colors last night was that I didn't feel like it had a very strong even though it's a very bright clear color here on its own I felt like when I mixed it with something else it didn't have a very strong tinting strength but we'll do some mixing with this um, and we'll see we'll see how it does and then we'll be glazing too to uh, to add a little uh, dimension and whatnot I'm not masking or waxing or anything I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep it easy so that way, if you guys are doing this along with me, you can totally handle it. And then I think I'm going to do the same thing here with the yellow. I'm using Google Hangouts for my live stream today. I used to use it a lot, and then I got fancy software, and I started using that. But I think that I'm thinking when I use Google Hangouts, YouTube actually tells more people that, that I'm going live. So maybe it doesn't. Maybe I'm just um, full of beans, but... It seems that way so I thought I would just try that on a, a day where I don't have a sponsored video and I can just kind of totally fall on my face and I if I uh, if so be it if it happens I'm gonna put some of this yellow in on its own and you can see how it looks and then I'm gonna add a little bit of um, of my hookers green and I'm gonna add some of that to the edges and I feel like the yellow actually is a stronger tinting strength than the hooker's green. I also think I might try a little of the um, Van Dyke Brown. Now, it's kind of, I think the reason I kind of, I always liked hooker's green. And I've been painting in watercolor since I was seven. And hooker's green was a color I had on my palette. But I was always embarrassed to say the name hooker's green when I was a kid. <laughs> so I think that's probably why I don't use hooker's green. <laughs> That's kind of pretty actually I do like that um I like that Van Dyke brown there it's just I really like burnt sienna I think because it's a very color colorful brown and actually this brown almost feels like it really naturally wants to go to a green and I will do Q&A at the end too so um and I'll probably flip the camera around so you can see my face so we can talk face to face um but I just uh, wanted to make sure I got the got in here. Oh, Mackenzie's wondering what my favorite type of art is to to do. I really love watercolor painting. I like it because I can be painting in no time. Um, I don't have to set up, you know, fancy things. I can open up my palette and just go. Like this is one of my this is my one of my travel palettes. It goes in my paint box. I've got that paint in there. It's dry. I just spritz it with water and I'm good to go. So I really like the versatility of that. Um, and, but other people's art to look at, I love looking at abstract art. It's something I don't have a knack for, but I just love to see well done abstract art um, from other people. All right, I think I'll probably let that dry a little bit and then we'll go back and add some de more details with the, um, with the Van Dyke Brown in a little bit. And I think I wanna do that center um, base. I think I want to do that purple actually. So let's do a little mixing of our opera, which is almost neon looking, and our um, our peacock blue. It's not going to give us like a, a real, real bold violet color, but it will give us a nice color. I'm going to go on dry paper this time and see see what we get. I'm going to do the edges and then I'm going to just kind of spread it with a with a damp brush. Although these colors probably are staining, so this might not be the best technique for this. We're going to give it a try. Generally, the more transparent and vivid a color is, the more it will be likely to stain. I think it's because the uh, the pigment particles are smaller and they can seep down into the paper rather than just sitting on top of it like our sedimentary colors. And I'm going a little bit more concentrated there in the um, inside of the vase. 
and it's dripping into the wet paper, but that's all right. We'll bring some down the edge. Everything's fine. If it gets to be a little too puddly, just blot it with a paper towel. I feel like I want a little more pink in that, though. So I think I'll just go in with a little bit of the, uh, the opera. You can blot your brush on your paper towel to get rid of any additional water that you don't want. And I also will soak up puddles by setting a dry brush down and just pulling up that excess water. Okay. So now I am going to um, start working on some of the flowers. I think I'll go up here first at this pretty yellow rose pet, rosebud here. And I'm going to mix the, sh the not the, it's not really a shadow, but it's more the deeper color. And I'm going to go in with this vermilion. And I'm going to grab some of the Aurelian. Let's see what we get there. That's kind of a nice, um, a nice rich yellow. And I'm going on the dry paper because I think that if I go in, I can get in there and paint the deeper areas and then go back in with the yellow and blend a little bit more. Now this isn't a super vivid orange, which is good for this flower, but I don't know as far as like being a regular on my palette, if it would, if it would make the cut for a lot of different, um, like if I wanted to have a really good mixing yellow, I don't know how, how I would like that. I think I also want to have a mix with some green in it. So I'm going to do the hooker's green. I just want to make sure I don't get mud. So I'm doing a little bit of the hooker's green and I'm going to do a little bit of it down here. As you can see that yellow, actually the Aurelian doing the green, it feels like it's a stronger mixing color than the, than the hookers. Maybe it's a little opaque. -er. I can't really tell. It doesn't, seem to be that opaque. I'm seeing my pencil lines like in the vase, but I'm wondering if um, there might be a little bit more on the opaque side. And while I'm at it, I could go in and do some highlighting areas on some of these little uh, little leaves here. I love seeing you guys chat together. That's really great. Feel free to get to know one another. Um, follow each other. If you hover over somebody's name, in the chat, you meet a new friend, um, you can actually go right to their channel or you can subscribe right from hovering your name, your uh, mouse right over their name. So that's nice because then you can always go back and we build a community this way. I think that's the most wonderful thing about YouTube is the community that we build here. So I've loaded up with just the Aurelian. I'm gonna tap it on my paper towel so any extra water just kind of floods out and then I'm gonna add it over into a clean part of the petal and I'm just gonna kind of gently coax that color, the color that I've already put there to blend just by going right up next to it. And then it will kind of wick out the color that's already there. And that's how we keep our freshness in our painting. Get some more of the fresh yellow. And so we just kind of touch it right up to the edge and it's going to wick through. If you feel like you have a hard line that you don't want, you can gently just scrub that edge with your brush and, and coax it a little bit more to blend. And remember, we can always go back and add more glazing, so um, so don't don't worry. And Zane says he loves being here. Z, G, it's a the, the avatar is a horse, so I don't know if that's a if that's a woman or a man's name. I always think of Zane as a as a man's name, but anyway, they love being here, so we're, we are happy to have you. I'm sorry. I hope I just didn't embarrass you there. <laughs> I'm telling you, I need a, I need somebody here keeping me from saying stupid things. But, but alas, you're stuck with just me today. So there, I've kind of gone through. I'm gonna let that dry. If you do want to take out any highlights at this point, like say you want maybe a little highlight on the edge, if it's still wet, you could go in with like a, a Q-tip and just kind of roll it. Try not to rub your paper because it will, um, it will kind of kick up and mess up your, um, your underpainting there. <laughs> Zane is a woman. I am so sorry. That's uh that's an unusual name, but I like it. It's I did not hope I didn't embarrass you. Oh my gosh, my face is red. Thank goodness the pick the camera's not on my face because it's totally red right now. So you can pick up um you can pick up your highlights just by dabbing it with a Q-tip. It's a little easier to control than a paper towel. And now we're gonna go over to our poppy there. 
And I think, let's see what happens using the Opera and using the Vermilion. Let's see if they stay fresh and bright or if they get muddy. So first I'm going to start with just the glaze of the Opera. And you can see how very neon it is. Oh, Rich is here. If you guys have any, um, you know, sciencey questions, he's the man. I just, uh, I, I can only tell you what I've observed over my past many years of painting, but he actually knows the, you know, reasons why paint behaves the way it does. So if I take this um, opera and take a little vermilion, I should get more of a neutral red. And it, wow, it's almost like a fluorescent orangey color. It's kind of crazy. I'm going to add this kind of to the bottom and let it wick up. Isn't that neat? Hope everybody's having a everybody here in the United States is having a very safe and happy Fourth of July. It's always nice to uh, get together with friends and family, or sometimes just take it easy, stay home, and paint. I didn't have any plans, so I just did a just uh, called my neighbor. We're going to do an impromptu barbecue, so that ought to be fun. Now I'm going to let that dry and then we'll come in maybe even with some purples to uh, to glaze with. And I'm going to go over here to our sunflower. And again, the reference photo is linked up. I am going to wet portions of it so that I don't just have a big yellow blob. I want to have some um, difference in color. So I'm wetting portions. I'm going to go in the center with that Van Dyke Brown. My brush is a little wet, a little too wet. So I'm going to just kind of tap it, let that extra moisture suck out and um, reload because I was afraid that I would end up with a really mess, messy mess there. So I'm just going to tap in some of the Van Dyke Brown in the middle. Now since I have some wet paper, some of it's wicking around, which is really kind of fun, and I'm getting the crisp line where it's drier. And now I think I'm going to go in with, I'm actually going to go in with a little hooker's green and hit some of the edges of my petals. Now, if we put the colors down pure and let them kind of mix on the flower, we will end up with a little bit fresher um, results. And this will just make our flower a little more interesting than painting it all one shade of yellow. Oh, I just love what happens. It's when that when that paint hits that water, it just kind of whooshes, and it's just really, really special and fun looking. All right, now I'm going to go with my Aurelian Yellow. And I, noticed, I, I don't know, this almost seems like it doesn't quite flow as well as like a cad yellow light. It almost reminds me of, um, I've had some lemon yellows that are nickel based that have that kind of gray, like when it's dry, it's got that, that kind of grayish green undertone to it. And that's kind of what this reminds me of. I don't know if, if the pigment is a nickel, but that's what it reminds me of the nickel yellow, lemon yellows that I, that I have. I really wish it was a little more fluid. I'm going to use a little of the um, vermilion close to the center. And I think I'm going to go in with it straight because I'm afraid that if I mix it, I feel like a lot of these colors don't really have um, great tinting strengths. They feel, um, they feel a little weak. I think if I let them mix on the paper, I'll get a much more vivid look than if I mix it on the palette for some of these here. I like how the white space in there is kind of um, kind of making the color seem a little more vibrant. And I really just want to dip into my cadmium yellow light that's on my regular palette so badly. It's like, I just know that would just give me what I want. The Aurelian is just kind of kind of sitting there. All right, I'm going to add this, uh, since my brush is full of Aurelian, I'm going to go ahead and add that to my stem. And then I'm going to pick up my hooker's green. And I need a little more water on that. And add that right in. A little more water, that's a little, maybe I'll grab some of that blue too, we'll mix some in there. All right. I 
think if you can if you can let the paint kind of mix on its own a little bit you get a little more vivid colors especially if your colors aren't don't don't feel super strong now i'm going to blot the stem below below the lip of the vase so that i can kind of lighten it a little bit so it's almost like the vase is affecting the color of the stem a little bit more kind of muting it there we go and we are going to kind of skip around back over to our rows we kind of have to skip around as things dry and um, when with broken a broken stroke here I find that's very appealing to look at instead of having it like that we have that one solid stroke right so we get that we have that element here but I think if we kind of go through here we can do like a broken stroke for our rose petals and it's it's nice it's nice to see and I'm gonna I'm gonna freehand a bunch in that I didn't sketch because I didn't want to sketch everything and have all those pencil marks kind of hanging around roses can have well they usually have kind of jaggedy serrated petals so it kind of gives that a uh, nice contrast between the softness of the uh, the rose petals by having that nice jagged um, thorny stems and serrated petals there and remember you can look at it like an abstract and you can have you know you don't need to see every full leaf you can just suggest that there's a leaf there and if you made a mistake on your poppy, then you can pop a leaf right on top of it and nobody's going to be the wiser. I'm, I'm getting a little I'll peek up at the comments every once in a while. It's so nice to see what you guys are saying. <laughs> I'm so glad that so many of you could make it on such short notice today. I'm going to go in with some Aurelian. And I just to let you know, we will do Q and A at the end. I'll flip my camera around, and we'll just uh, we'll chat a bit. It really makes me feel good knowing you guys are home and you're watching a a uh, video and you're painting. And I know you're not on the road somewhere. <laughs> I know you're not in a ditch, guys. <laughs> the mom and me is coming out. <laughs> I was so nervous. New Year's Eve and Fourth of July. I do not like to travel in those days. <laughs> And I want to put a few of these guys in my vase. And we'll just be very abstract on the ones in here. Okay, we don't need to we don't need to do too much to them. Just need to suggest that they're there. I'm going to just grab a little more Aurelian, see if there's any other places I want to hit with that lighter color. And I really like the freshness of that. Honestly, I kind of don't want to overdo it especially since your ruling doesn't tend to move too much and I don't want to get in there and fuss with it a heck of a lot. Now, if you want some shadows, which are probably a good idea, um, let's grab that peacock blue. Let's see if we can get a decent shadow with the peacock blue and the uh, the hooker's green. Ooh, that's lovely. That's a lovely color. I am going to blot a little bit, get some of the water out of the reservoir of that brush because it's, uh, it's a synthetic squirrel, so it does hold quite a bit. And I'm going to see if I can dab in some... some deeper shadows here and there i like this is kind of an inky this makes a very inky color which i think will move pretty well you can actually use your credit card scraper to do veins here into the wet paint i'm surprised my paint staying as wet as it is because it is very warm today now you can get darker inside the um bud vase here Oh, what we should do too is um, do some shadows, do some like, not shadows, but um, like when you have glass vases, if there's light, a lot of times the light um, goes through the colored vase and then we get beautiful colors like on the table. And this color, I mean, that Aurelian isn't going to move too much, but still, that's pretty, it's pretty to have that color. I want to get a little bit of the um, the green mix in there too. We'll do that with all of our little... Flowers. Then we can go in later with our um, 
with our Van Dyke Brown and gray, put some grayer shadows in there too. So I think that'll be nice. Do that over here with our mixed purple. Like it's on a windowsill or something. That's pretty. I love to see colored glass on a windowsill. Do that here with our yellow. Not our yellow, our blue, our peacock blue. Oh, that's pretty. I love I love those colors just kind of flowing. And we can glaze in some shadows, so don't feel like you have to do everything in one go. Just kind of get that down there. And now I feel like our little poppies need some need some help. So we're going to do Aurelian. We're going to do our nice lighter green Aurelian and hookers. And hopefully that's dry. We're going to do our thin stems there. I'm just going to give a little bit of a little bit of um, color around the bud, and then I do want to put a little shock of pink in the middle where the flower is going to going to bloom from. Just dab it there. If a little bit blends in, I'm not going to. It's not going to bother me. It's going to brown a little bit, but I'm I'm fine with that. I like to see those little. Um, exciting things that happen. Oh, somebody asked about gum paper tape. Whatever happened to that water activated tape? I still use it when I stretch my um, my paper and it's fantastic for that. I'm going to use some of the Peacock Blue and some of the uh, Van Dyke Brown because I want to see what it does when I mix it together and it seems to be like a deep green. So I think I'm going to add some opera to that. Oh yeah, now we're getting a gray. Ooh, that's nice. It's kind of like a purpley gray. And that's what I'm going to do with the center of the poppy, but I feel like I need to turn it because uh, look at that. It almost looks black, doesn't it? Because I like to have the tip of my brush kind of facing the edge that I'm trying to preserve. But that's not black. We mixed it with what we've been using. Now, if I want another dark somewhere, I can stay with that color and I can bring in, you know, really sharp darks here. I don't want to get rid of all of the loose soft edges. I just want to have some um, some contrast. I did put a link to Rich's blog in my video description in the video description of this if you guys are looking to um, to follow him on his blog. He also has a YouTube channel. I don't know if you click on his name you might I think he has a couple channels. So well, I'm sure you can tell you in the in the comments as well. And I'm just glazing some of the opera here. So pretty. I do feel like it needs that uh, that vermilion with it though to kind of give it a little bit of heft. I'll be curious to look back at the replay of this and see how the quality differs from using Google Hangouts to using an encoder. Figure today's a day for experiments. <laughs> Oh, I think it might also be kind of pretty to take a little of that Aurelian and see if we drop some of that into the top of the petals, if it'll give us a nice clean glow of bright color. Oh, I kind of like that. And it helps it helps us kind of cross-pollinate our colors throughout a painting. It gives us kind of a peach, peachy color. That's pretty. I like it. And if you want, hopefully I have one right handy. You use your credit card scraper. I don't have credit card scraper, but I do have a dip pen. I can use that. Yeah, I'll use that. Um, you can scrape in some lines with your credit card scraper. I don't think this is going to hurt my dip pen, but if anybody knows, they can warn people in the comments, I guess. I ain't going to blot where my black is kind of moving there. Oh, and you can blot out any other highlights that you want while you're at it. Okay, now I'm going to do some glazing over here on this blue vase. I'm already over the 30 minute. Rich said I should keep this to 30 minutes for the uh, for the new palette color challenge, but I'm already over that. So, sorry, Rich. I've broken a rule. We've all broken rules in this challenge today. <laughs> so when you do like a nice strong, um, a nice strong color like this, and you're doing a shadow. Um, try just to be very deliberate with your stroke and then you can go back in with a damp brush and guide it out a little bit more if you want to but just try to be try to be steady and deliberate and you might need to put something 
down to rest your arm on or turn your paper so you reach it at a so you're at a comfortable angle like I'm gonna do the lip of this I'm gonna move it so I can rest my hand there and just kind of swoop across if you do end up with little sparkles try to preserve them like that little white highlight there that way I won't have to go in later and scrub or um, or add white or anything I don't I try not to add white if I don't have to just because it helps keep my paint a lot fresher there's a little bit of a scallop design on this vase I just want to hint at it because um, I didn't really do any I didn't sketch anything in too perfectly or perfectly at all I just did a very basic sketch so I just kind of want to hint that there's that scallop design on the edge and let the brain do the rest let the viewers brain fill in the gaps I just want to give it a give it a suggestion of, of shape and then since I my paper was still wet under there and I'm getting a little bleed I'm actually gonna just uh, guide it out a little bit more I'm gonna pull some more water out so I don't have that hard blossom edge it'll blend out and I can just reclaim the uh, the definition that I need later do a little glazing on the middle bud base which we made up so Really, it can be whatever we want it to be. We don't have to worry about that too much. Mixing up a little more violet with our opera in our peacock blue. And I keep looking at my reference photo like I'm going to suddenly see this vase there <laughs> materialize. But uh, yeah, so I'm just going to kind of add like a broken ellipse there and, and then just blend it out a little bit. Maybe with a little bit more opera. You know, that was a little too much. I'm actually going to blot that off because I didn't like that. Let's do that one again. Now you win some, you lose some. And let's go and do something to this face. Now this is the one that's got the, um, it's got some ridges on it. And I thought we'd go back in with a Van Dyke Brown. I really still think that's a great option. So let's grab our Van Dyke Brown. I've been doing this all with a number eight pointy round. So, um, so this has been a pretty easy painting. I've been able to get all of my different uh, line widths from that one brush. I always recommend if you're strapped for cash or you don't have a lot of space and you're trying to figure out what to take on a trip, go with a round because you have so much versatility with that. I'm going to get the lip here. I really want to make sure I have that a little more pronounced. and get another little line there now when that dries we can glaze over with some more colorful uh, shades of yellow if we want to and and a little green if we want to give it a little bit of indication of the bottom so we know that's sitting firmly on our table I try not to um, do the same to each side here because if your drawing isn't perfect, it's going to look a little wonky and awkward. So I try to kind of um, just give the illusion of a symmetrical vase there. So now we're back up here to this first flower that we started and we're going to start adding some detail. I'm going in with a mix of vermilion and aurelian. And I'm just kind of glazing on a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of color to adjust things a little bit. A ruling in is not going to be my favorite yellow. I can tell you that right off the bat. Um, but it's nice to try something different. It just feels it feels a little gray to me. I've got to say it just has this dull, duller feeling. Like I feel like if I had a cadmium yellow, it would this flower would really just glow right now. Oops, didn't mean to drag into that green. So I'm probably going to have to do something um, kind of creative with shadowing to get this a little livelier. Um, I think that I am going to maybe try some, maybe if I add some Van Dyke Brown, it'll make the yellow feel a little bit fresher in contrast. So I'm just going to go in very gently with some of this. Try to define the petals a little bit. I 
I just don't want it to look like a dead flower. Maybe I'll go into some straight vermilion too. I mean, vermilion does feel a little like I thought it'd be more, much more transparent than a cadmium, but it does still feel a little heavy. I'll give that a little bit in there. I'm not loving the way this flower is coming out, but I think it's it's improving. And we're gonna just soften the edges with a damp brush. And I like actually how the green's kind of wicking up into there. So I think I'm gonna add a little bit more of that green mix that we made and just kind of let it do its thing because I feel like that's giving it a little bit more life. Somebody asked me to, to tell what I was thinking while I'm painting more so than I do. So hopefully this is helping you guys um, with the decision, telling you the decisions I'm making as I go. So what I'm doing here is I've got that peacock blue and, um, and Van Dyke brown with a little bit of opera in it. It's that nice dark that we made before. And I'm just putting in some very um, loose veining lines. And basically what this is doing to the painting is giving it some movement and a little bit of life which sometimes can be easy to lose when you're doing a still life. Everything can feel very static. So by, you know, not mixing our all of our colors on our palette, by letting them mix on the paper, and by adding some jabby lines like this, like I'm doing with the veins, it gives a little freshness that otherwise we could be missing. I'm going back into, let's see, what do I want to work on? I think I want to go back to the blue vase. And maybe I'll take a little bit of that opera into that blue just to give it a nice deep shadow. It almost makes like um, it's not quite a violet. It's it's not quite an indigo either. It's just kind of like a deeper a deeper color. And I'm gonna get my ellipse to find a little bit more up here. And I'm gonna get the kind of little ridges and scallops on the vase to find a little bit more and we got to redefine the bottom of our vase because we lost that when we were um hopefully that's dry enough we lost that when we were working get that nice sharp line there and add a little bit of that color into the little scallops that we made And we also want to pull a little wash over our stem to show that it's in the vase and not in front of it. So we just pull some of that wash right over there. And then I do want a little bit more of that purpley color, but a little heavier on the pink. And I've got to do something with this here. I think it just needs a little bit of some sort of definition because I just feel like this little vase here is not doing very well. There, that's a little bit better. And then I can bring a little bit of that into the table here, especially the opera because I don't think it's going to interfere with the other surrounding colors as much. And then I do want to add a little bit of shading into the sh into the end of the vase because they're they're a little too heavy. It's floating a little too much. So I am going to I gotta figure out what the light source is coming from. I don't want to have a very strong light source so I think let me just kind of add a shadow right at the bottom of this. Um, yeah, I think I'll just have it come forward. I think I'll just have the shadow come forward a little bit. So I'm going in with the dark, and I am going to blend it out with a damp brush, damp clean brush. It's a little bit better. It's giving us a little bit of grounding. And I can do the... Um, do the Van Dyke Brown on this one over here with a little bit of green in it. 
we don't want a dead we don't want it to be dead but we do need a we do need some sort of grounding color over there because it just feels like they're floating hope you guys are all enjoying this and I hope you stick around for the Q&A afterwards. We still have over 200 people here in the group. That's totally awesome. Um, let's see. And we could do a little bit of detail on the on the daisy here. I have a um, vermilion and aurelian mixed together. And I'm just going to draw in a few petals here and there. I'm not going to go too crazy with it because I don't want to lose the freshness of and the looseness of this. Having a few more of those little petals, but really, I don't I don't want to lose the freshness of this. And um, maybe a little bit more in the poppy, and I think we'll call it a day. So think of those questions and prepare to repost them because I won't be able to scan through and, and go back and see everything. I also want to thank everybody that that showed up today and um, people that helped out each other with their questions. That is so awesome and helpful. Helpful for me and helpful for them. And I'm just going to go and spread that color with a damp brush. There. And of course, if you want, and I know some of you guys just want to look away because I'm going to spatter this and that horrifies some of you, but you can spatter some color if you feel like it just needs a little something, something. And I love to spatter, so <laughs> if that bothers you, then you won't have to look at it too much longer. So there, that's my, uh, there's my play with a color, a palette of colors that I'd never use. And I think it was pretty fun. I mean, I had a good time. I hope you guys did. I'm going to move my camera, so please excuse a little bit of awkwardness as I, um, as I do that. <laughs> Woo, there we go. We're almost there, guys. Hello, everybody. Oh, look, you're looking at my ceiling. Isn't that nice? And my selfie stick. There we go. I'm going to push this out of the way. Okay, now I can look at the uh, at the questions. You can see my lights and everything. Um, let's see. Hi, Linda Ann Smith. Hi, Barb. How are you doing today? Good to see you. Hi, Gracie. Hi, Arcia. Hi, Gail. Um, oh, my gosh. Hi, Linda and Teresa and... Um, Glenda, wow, wonderful to see everybody. So if you have questions, go ahead and type them in. Um, Terry is pleasantly surprised with this. <laughs> Thank you. I, I think it stayed pretty fresh. I wish, I wonder if I could prop it up on something so that probably the paint will drip because it's still pretty wet. But um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. You know, I really like how the how the daisy came out because I was some of you dealing with something with a lot of little petals like that. It can it can get very very boring and blah looking too repetitive so i think having the soft and hard edges really helped there um let's see gracie asks what inspires you to draw and paint um gee you know i'm inspired by a lot of things sometimes i'm inspired by a new brush or a new tube of paint or a new supply that i'm using and other times um i see something like in nature or i see a photo or just something like that or the colors from a, like even a an article of clothing will strike me as inspirational so it's really everywhere do you prefer watercolor paper or canvas as a medium asked trina howell watercolor paper i do um, I have used the watercolor canvas, but I don't, it doesn't flow as well. And I like the, the fluidity. Um, have you read Jeannie Dolby's Making Colors Sing? You seem like a master of hers. No, I've never heard of that. That's a great suggestion, though. I will have to look that up. Going on vacation next month, so I always like to have a lot of books to read. Uh, where do you get your ideas for each new YouTube class? Do you ever get YouTube burnout? Sometimes they do, yeah. Sometimes I'll, I'll record a bunch of things so I can take a few days off and decompress, but generally I'm working on something creative every day and I just turn the camera on and that, that really keeps me fired up. And also I do a lot of different things, so it keeps me from getting too stale. I think if I did watercolors every day, I'd probably get burned out a lot quicker than, you know, since I do watercolors and stamping and I change it up every day. I hope I'm not out of focus. I set the focus when I... Uh, when I started, I sound like Miss Barbara from Romper Room, reading the names <laughs> made me chuckle. I don't know who that is, but she sounds like a heck of a lady. Um, hello, Ontario and Mary Hill. Um, would you do some colored pencil videos? I would love to do some colored pencil videos. I just haven't, um, I haven't had a chance to lately. 
What are your favorite mediums except watercolors? I love pastel. I love oils. Um, you know, I love to stamp. Uh, but I would say probably oils and pastels after watercolors. What did you use to hold your paint in the baby wipes containers? Hot glue. Um, oh, and the little caps, they were called Alta caps. You could also use bottle caps. The Alta caps are from um, Craft Chameleon. Um, and they're made for jewelry, but I had a bunch of leftovers. Uh, Teresa asks, how long have you been doing art for? Um, many years, since I was five. So, yeah, it's like 35 years. Long time. <laughs> and, no, I never went to art school, Annie. I am, uh, I guess you call it self-taught, but I have had wonderful uh, tutors along the way. Um, I've been, oh, Martha says, I've inspired her to take two or three brushes and your travel and travel watercolor palette to start doing watercolors. Going to Colorado. Oh, wonderful. Oh, beautiful scenery there. Um, no, I have not gone to art school. Um, do I have a link for traceables? Well, I if I do offer a pattern, I do put it on my blog and I put the link in the video description. I don't always have them because sometimes I draw them here. Um, pan past Valerie wants some pan pastels. Yes, I love the pan pastels. I will have to do some soon. Um, where do you get ideas for your fashion? Bridget asks. Um, I don't know what you mean. You mean like my outfits? I, I just buy clothes I like. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, let's see. What is your favorite brand of watercolor paint? I like M. Graham the most. Um, oh, and uh, somebody else is from Colorado, and she says you'll find lots to paint there. Absolutely. Will you ever do the three marker challenge? I always love watching doing those types of limited palette challenges. You know, I'm, I don't do markers that much. Um, I'd have to think about that. I don't know if I would have anything new to add. There's some really great marker artists that do that, but maybe add it to my request list on my website if you haven't yet, so I can remember it. Um, Oh, somebody suggests doing the travel the travel watercolor kits with gum packages and the little blister packages that gum comes in. Uh, Linda asks, do I travel to teach workshops? I travel um, once a year to Massachusetts to do workshops. Um, I think that's probably all I'll end up doing just because it's a lot of work to travel and, um, and it takes a lot of planning and kind of keeps me from a lot of the work that I do at home, at least until my kids are a little bit older. Yes, I do have jewelry making vids um, scheduled. Uh, yes, my daughters do have a channel. They're the Crafty Twins. They do craft projects for kids. Um, what are my two to three essential watercolor colors? Um, two or three. I like uh, quinacridone magenta. I like. Um, I would go with cad red, a cad yellow light, and I would go with ultramarine blue or cyan or turquoise. You know, just try to get a red, yellow, and blue. They make a lot of good mixes. Uh, I have out. Oh, can you do more Southwest themed projects and paintings? Um, yes, and I, I did release one a couple weeks ago, a Southwest painting. Any suggestions on what to do with water soluble oil pastels? I can't seem to make friends with mine. Um, I do have a few videos on them. Try the techniques that I've used. I like coloring them thickly and then blending them with a um, with a damp brush. Uh, let's see. I'm seeing some duplicate questions here. Um, Please type your questions in all caps so I can catch them quickly. They're going by really fast. Lindsay, what's your advice for new YouTube artists um, making good quality videos? I'd say use what you have. It takes a lot of practice to get good. So if this doesn't happen overnight, you know, you got to practice. <laughs> Don't let that discourage you because, <laughs> you know, just, just practice. That's There's no shortcut. Um, let's see. Now, I think I'm going to try to scroll up a little bit because I know I missed some questions. Uh... Let's see. Uh, Rich suggests checking out Jane Blundell's blog for travel palettes. And uh, if you, I'll take a couple more questions if you guys have any, and um, then we'll we'll sign off and let you guys get on to your barbecues and your other Fourth of July celebrations. Um, do you know of any good brush pen brands that can be used and blend it out with water easily. You know, my favorite right now, and it's probably the cheapest one, is the Prima. You get a two pack for under $7, and I find that they feed water just the perfect um, perfect volume so that you can like get a really great blend out. So the P-R-I-M-A, Prima. Um, I'm not crazy about the flat ones, but their round is, the rounds are really good. 
Um, how do you get an artist block? I Sometimes I'll clean my studio. That will help me get out of artist block. Sometimes I'll just go to the beach or I'll just go lay in the sun for a while and kind of let my mind clear and then I can I'll come back fresh and ready to go. Or try it or try different colors like we did today. Try paints that you don't normally use and that often you know it gives you problems and when you have to overcome problems and find solutions it's it, that really gets that creativity grinding in your head I think so do something completely different change gears so if you've never sewn before sew something you know do something different um, oh and Rich suggests the Pentel three packs of watercolor brushes are nice great um, the Nijis are good too I still think the Prima gives you a great feed of, of uh, water and uh, and yeah I really and they're very inexpensive the weather in Maine right now, it's uh, about 85 and sunny. It's gorgeous. I'm looking out the window right now. The window's like right past the camera. Um, oh, hi, Jeannie. Um, let's see. Did I get through all the questions? Oh, thank you, Grace. Grace likes my hair. I actually I pinned it up because it's hot today. And I'm just going to scroll back real quick because a lot of things came in really quickly. It's hard to do this on my own, <laughs> I've got to say. Uh, oh, maybe I did catch everything. Okay. Oh, Ashley Scott asks, what is your suggestion for a beginner watercolor palette? Um, what I recommend is not going crazy with your colors and getting two versions of each primary. So your primaries are red, yellow, and blue, right? So your two reds would be something that's a little pinkier, like quinacridone magenta or alizarin crimson, something that's a, uh, it's a red that leans more towards purple on the color wheel. And then you want a red that's more orangey, like a cadmium red light, some or a vermilion like we use today, something that's, you know, more of a, a warmer a warmer red. Then for yellow, you want something that's a little cooler, like leans more towards green, such as a cad yellow light or lemon yellow. And you want a warmer yellow, such as a, um, a gamboge or um, cad yellow deep, or just something that's got, that feels a little warmer. If you look at it, it feels more like the sun versus a lemon. And then for blue, you want something like a phthalo blue or a Prussian blue, something that's greenier. And you want a blue that's a little more purplier, like a ultramarine or a cobalt. So as long as you have two versions of each of your primaries, you're going to be able to mix an infinite amount of colors. I mean, really, you're going to you're going to learn so much mixing with those colors. I also like to have a yellow ochre. For me, that's a very I call it a sweetener. It seems to make my painting sweeter, probably because I tend to paint really vividly and I find those can tone down my colors and add a warmth that um, that I really like. It's kind of like the glamour filter on your it's like an Instagram filter. It makes everything a little prettier, a little less wrinkly, a little, you know, a little more pleasant to look at. And I also like burnt sienna because it's a really lively brown and I can use it with my ultramarine to make nice darks. Um, I can use it to warm up things. I can use it in place of red if I want to paint a painting that's more earthy. So those would be my nine colors that I would recommend. Oh, sap green. You can mix sap green. It's such a useful color that I love to have it in the tube. Um, but go small. Learn what you can. Get a small kit of paints and mix and mix and mix and learn and then um and then add more to it piece by piece as you want to that would be my suggestion um okay i'm just gonna scroll down see if i missed anything i thank you guys so much for showing up at um at short notice like this uh Oh, Saber's wondering if I have any knitting videos planned. I don't. I'm really not that great of a knitter, and I knit uh, knit Continental, which is kind of backwards for a lot of people, and I really don't feel like I'm ever contributing enough information when I'm doing knitting. I feel, I feel a little... Um, inadequate in knitting I, I enjoy doing it but i i know there's so many so much better knitting and crochet uh people to follow on youtube i don't want to do something that's not going to be um that's not going to be as good as what's already there um let's see yes and you are better to buy six pro colors and 45 student ones i do agree with rich there but you don't have to spend a ton of money and you don't and you know there is nothing wrong with using student grade paints you're still going to learn how to mix colors and i'll tell you something you can take gorgeous expensive paper and gorgeous expensive paint and you could give a brush to an elephant and they're going to make something that's pretty to look at because the paint's gorgeous and the paper's gorgeous. You could give somebody with a lot of skill, dirt and water, and they're going to make a beautiful painting. So yes, your paintings are going to look better if you use the expensive, really high quality stuff, but build your skills 
use what you can afford don't go don't get stuff that's too don't get a tube of paint that's nine dollars it's too precious to use it it sits in your drawer for 10 years i mean there's that that does not serve you so there's nothing wrong with using, using student paint um kind of get your feet wet and then upgrade as you can afford to um let's see i asked a coworker who was an art student how to get a really nice pink and she said add white but it made it super opaque what works and what else do you use white for well you, adding white for oils or acrylics is um very appropriate but for watercolors you're better to get one of those reds that leans more towards purple and add water well use water in place of white when you're doing watercolor um thank you linda ann i do appreciate it i appreciate you hopping on too to help moderate the the comments that was really really awesome um okay i think that um that I've caught up. If I've missed your question, I apologize. Uh, I want to thank you all for coming, and I didn't intend this for this to be a hour long broadcast, but um, I'm so glad you guys enjoyed it and stuck around for this long. Thank you so much for watching, and please, if you want to try this challenge, you want to try some colors you've never used before, you are more than welcome to go over to my Facebook page and um, pop in either a link to your website, blog, YouTube channel if you're doing it there, or if you don't have a blog or a website or YouTube channel, you can upload a picture right there in that thread so we can all see, and that way nobody has to get left out. If you're not on Facebook, I do apologize. Um, it is free. And I know some people just get accounts so they can do fun things like this. Um, but there, I hope you um, I hope you found this fun. And until next time, happy crafting. Thank you so much for uh, for joining us today. Bye-bye. <laughs> now watch me awkwardly fiddle with my computer. <laughs>